Okay. I'm slightly more recharged. Got a new coffee, which I've slurped to everyone's delight. Okay, so we're now back in. This is part three, part two, part two. <laughs> I don't know. Part two of this rough ad hoc live stream that I'm doing, continuing working on the breadboard of Ericsson's VCO, continuing to to try to absorb things, learn things, and, you know, express the difficulties I have along the way. Anyway, we're now up to page 20, on to tuning. Um, just going to check how many pages are left. There's temperature trouble. FM input. Cool. Can you believe getting to that point? wave shaping there's lots of great stuff here <laughs> is there any way oh then we get so i've got another eight pages or so okay that's all right let's give that a go so where was i tuning right so i'll stop running on and i'll just get on with it So where did we get to? I got a high pitched output that was stable, temperature stable because of the two transistors. So now out to page 20 of the, the manual to tuning. <coughs> Excuse me. So all that's left to deal with is the fine tuning, our offset and scaling circuit to get that to match up with that five volts, excuse me, uh, five octaves and getting that right. Since the emitter follower pushed our baseline voltage up to 500 millivolts, oh God, we'll need to be able to move our sequence not only up, but also down from there. Second, we need to somewhat restrict the offset range so that our tuning knob covers a musically useful interval. Okay, yeah, good. We can do both in one fell swoop. Well, by linking the offset potentiometer to the power rails, through an appropriately sized resistor or resistors. Of course, that's what we always do. And by substituting the ground with the negative rail connection, our dual input voltage divider doesn't care if the input voltages are positive or negative. We're still going to work the exact same way, which means we're able to subtract voltages as well. You know, this suddenly reminds me of that, um, that game I was playing. We had all those logic gates, signal something it was called, um, in order to, and it was trying to get your head around the idea that this this maths was working. It was doing positive and negatives, although it was and it wasn't, and it's going up to a maximum level. Of, anyway, it doesn't really matter. It just reminds me of that and how much of a brain tease that was. Now, to get proper scaling, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Goatfish, it is a strange time. Uh, this is purely to document the the movement of this breadboard through to completion so that on Wednesday, uh, I'm going to do another live stream all about the soldering side of this Ericsson's VCO because I had no idea that it would take as long as it has and I haven't scheduled in the time for that. So I'm just trying to fill in a couple of the hours now in order to move this this forward so that we're at a, a finishable state on Wednesday. So that's why I'm doing it now. I don't care if people are watching or not. That's not that important. Uh, it's purely for my own benefit of capturing all of this. And I thought, heck, I'll test restream while I'm doing it to see whether I can stream from my phone, which is what this is, uh, and how well that works, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it all has a reason for it. And none of those reasons are the mass acquisition of eyeballs and views in order to make myself a millionaire. That'll come later. So, so all we really need to do, apparently, swap out the 4K resistor, which I don't have. I have a 14K resistor. But what value should the new resistor have? 
While we could determine the exact value using formulas, there's actually a good reason to use a potentiometer here instead. Why is that? Because no electronic component is exactly like another. There's always going to be a slight difference in how two identical transistors behave. All right. So since our NPN transistor is ultimately in charge of controlling the pitch, it needs precision. And we're trying to make our oscillator conform to the volt per octave standard. So in order to achieve, to achieve this, we need to scale our CV down by exactly the right factor so that we're properly aligned with the transistor's mm -hmm. exponential base voltage to collector current curve. <laughs> Sounds much harder than it actually is. No, I mean, actually, that makes sense. It, it makes sense to me. Uh, by filling with a scaling potentiometer, we can simply trial and error our way towards a perfect match. Yes, I mean, I've done plenty of oscillator tuning uh, of kits that I've built, and it's not, well, it's supposed to be an exact science, but it's not really. You're just giving it a go and seeing where you get to. Instead of using a standard potentiometer, we're going to use something called a precision trimmer. Aha! That's this fella, I bet. Where a regular pot spans its entire range under one turn of the knob, a precision trimmer needs to be turned multiple times. Ten times for the one we'll be using here. Yeah, these are weird things. You just keep on turning and wonder what on earth's going on, and then suddenly it changes something. This allows a much more precise control. And this is what our completed scaling and offset circuit looks like. <laughs> okay. We've got a bunch of resistors, then we've got a variable resistor, I think. When you set up resistors like this, okay, this is what it, this is what it looks like. Note I've chosen to combine a fixed 1k5 resistor with a 1k precision trimmer. Yeah, all right. When you set up resistors like this, their values are simply added together. Since the correct value is going to be somewhere between 1k5 and 2k5, this gives us even finer control. Okay, rather than it being between zero and 1k, it's now going to be between 1k5 and 2k5, which makes the tuning process a lot less tedious. Okay. Seems to make sense. Think of this as if you're creating a variable voltage divider with a reduced movement range. It's a bit like as if you're physically limiting how far you can turn the knob. Okay. Okay, so I've got another breadboard. Excuse me, I've got lunch stuck in my teeth. <laughs> Resistors are futile, yes, that's, that's, that's very funny. I'm going to have to grab a key step from somewhere, aren't I? Okay, in a minute. So let's have a look at this breadboard then and see if I can mirror up what the heck is going on. So I got as far as my one meg resistor and I had the base going to naught volts. No, in fact, going to negative. Whereas now I'm having the base, because the base of that transistor is ultimately controlling the whole the whole shop. Because it's that which controls ultimately what controls the voltage behind the other transistor, which is the one connected to the 
half amp to the oscillator or something. Anyway, take that out of there. So that no longer exists there. So the blue thing covers three. It's a 1K blue thing. What it says on it. So W102, 13H, which I'm sure if you look that up will tell you exactly the sort of thing that it is, but it's the only one I have in the pack, so I'm going to go with the idea that it is it. Now it's got three legs, it's covering three holes. Looking at the breadboard picture, it looks like they've put the the turny screw in the top left corner so i'm just going to do that i don't have any other information on what these legs are so i'm just going to stick all three in there in fact i'm going to move it along one because uh, that's too close one two three okay So then I've got the base here going to the middle leg. Yeah, this thing's a little bit wide. I've then got another 100k, which I think these ones are, going from there also out a bit to give me some room. Another hundred K. Going from the same leg to not so far away, so to its own thing. Got another hundred. from in between to the positive. It's not in between, that's on the same leg. Not the same leg as that hundred, it needs to go to the next one. One K five. <laughs> Don't know what I wrote on there. That could be a one K five. I oh, will check it. One point five K, cool. Yeah. One point five K going in between. So 
those two go into the negative rail, I mean the zero rail. Let's have a mixture. No. Let's head to the zero rail. And that should be attached to pin three or that pin on that, which it is. Okay, they all seem to be in the right place. I need to put in the wires. One alongside. Going straight over to there. This one going alongside it, which also lines up with the the hundred K. So this first one lines up with that hundred K. Yeah, this one lines up with the second hundred K, goes over the top. Uh, Glenn, this is the Erica Synths VCO in their educational DIY series that I did a video of on Friday and I'm doing a finished video on Wednesday. I'm needing to go through some bits now in order to get myself to a finished breadboard by Wednesday. It's more complicated than it sounds. No, it's less complicated. It's, I don't know. It's complicated. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is just an impromptu live stream. There's nothing uh, refined about it. And it is as much for my own benefit as anybody else's. Okay. So you put that pot back in. This is going to go. So this leg needs to match up with that. All right. I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. And it needs to go off itself. To what looks like the negative. The north volt rail. Yeah, north volt. So to do that, I have to go alongside it. Right. Okay, so the whole rail. Then finally, I need to wire in the pot, which comes here. Which gives me one, two, three. Maybe if I bend those, no, oh, it's difficult to bend those off. And could I do it? Does it matter which way around it goes? Probably not. So let's do it this way around. It's a little bit easier to, to comprehend. It goes on two and three like that. Yeah. And then I still need a thirty three K. Thirty three K one. Everything's losing its label, which is not good. I need to write them on a piece of paper, put them back next to their names. And this last one goes on to pin three, taking it to positive, like that. <clears throat> right, that seems to be it. Now, as far as tuning goes, it wants me to use actual notes. So I can't just plug in, because I, I was using a, a simple sequencer where for which the notes don't mean anything. They're just voltages. So I need something which actually put
puts out something recognizable. Let's plug the power back in. So that I think is positive. That's a negative and a positive. This is a negative. I think that's how it works. Let's see if we get any output. Look at that, you see? <laughs> so what you're saying Ian is that the, the patch cables are the, the problem with the sound is that what you're saying okie dokie right so that's great so what's happened is that all this garbage over here which has uh, which we've plugged in in front of this pot the tuning pot has essentially scaled that pot across its entire range of changing the pitch rather than it just being a tiny bit which is what we had with that single transistor thing so all of this has built out the scaling and ranging uh, to the point that we're now doing tuning now i need to get my key step involved somehow having a, a powered hub stuck on my wall like they do here it's not plugged into any computer it's just a usb powered hub that i use as a power supply for almost everything incredibly useful very very useful Right. Um, so I need I need patch cable. Well, I was able to extract the patch cable without the whole lot falling down on me. That's rather extraordinary. So I'll take the pitch out and that. Actually, going to put this down here after all because there's too much going on. I'm going to get myself in and not, I'm not careful. You're just going to have to, to know that that is there. Right, so let's plug this in here. What is it asking me to do? In order to tune it properly, you need something like a sequencer or CV keyboard. Here's how it works I like to dial four steps on my sequencer to a low. C, four more steps to a high C, then let it run in a loop. Okay. 
to make your life a little easier, you could use some sort of digital tuner. It's a good idea. You do it by ear. What we're looking for here is that the low and high note to be the same, but five octaves apart. Right, well, I'm going to have to use some kind of tuner then. Use the offset parameter uh, potentiometer to move the low note to C. Then you have to fiddle with the 1K trimmer to do the top note. Trimmer is not only moving the high but also the low, so you have to keep counteracting that with the offset. Yeah, I mean, the way I've visualized this before is that you've got one knob which is essentially expanding the range or contracting the range and you've got another knob which is moving that up and down so when i move this the bottom note up the top note is moved when i then try to counteract that by squeezing it both both of them move and so it's is that sort of relationship that you're playing with i think how am i how's best what am i <laughs> So I'm going to need my own tool or something, aren't I? And that's a real pain because that means bringing out a, another... Stand by. I don't know where it is. It must be... So let's bring this into play. Oh, <laughs> that's not the room. Just don't have the room for this. Mm. Right, I've got to use some kind of tuner. So that makes sense. I mean, it's not going to be very good for you on the video, but that's not massively important right now. This is, it needs to be no the out, and then over there. Now, I had this question before, which is over, how do you know 
what voltage is coming out of the keyboard. At what note? Right, so what I could do is I could take this out of here and just plug it in. Just try not to blow myself up. So I've got that coming out of here. And I need to, so that's 0 volt, 1 volt. 2 volt, okay, so that is not volt at the bottom. Got it, right, good. Confirmed, bottom octave C is 0 volts. Do, do, do. So let's see if I can first of all tune. Out, that's an out. So let's turn this to frequency. Getting anything, and it's coming in from here. Maybe it's just not loud enough. So, uh, struggles, struggles, struggles are real, man. Let's leave that plugged in. Take that one out for the minute. Turn that up massively over there. Oh, yeah. I'm no, I'm not doing this right, am I? The output of that, yes, I am. The output of that's going into in. You know, I am doing that right. If I go back to the scope, it's just not giving me a loud enough thing, I think, for it to understand. I'm only like getting one volt of level. It's a nice sawtooth wave though. So, I'm going to do then. I could try to take it. All right. <laughs> so if I put this back in. Oh heck!
I love far too much cross. Uh, why is getting cross? Probably. <laughs> anyway, what was I going to do? I was going to try to plug. Why is that making a difference? Oh, I don't know. Everything is. Uh, making a difference at this point. So I want to take, uh, take that out of there for a minute. That's that, that's that. Need a nice ridiculously long cable. That's no better, that's worse. All right, there's a bit more, there's a bit more. Okay, that's gonna be sodding loud. <laughs> So does that uh, does that work? Yes. Okay. So now that's picking up an input, right? Whew. Okay. So I'm gonna turn myself down over here. Down through there. Pull that down there. So I've just gone through my output module and just pumped it up essentially. So I've now got my tuner going on. Now this is supposed to be uh, C0. No, no, is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, that's my point, isn't it? At the moment it says it's C... Yeah. Let's go from C0 to C5, surely. In which case, this is supposed to be a whole lot lower. Oh, I've lost it again. All right, something is just not quite going right here. There's C5, C4. See, my tuner is just all over the place. It's not 
it's not mm-hmm. identifying that at all. So Another idea. Okay, get rid of this. This is not helping. How clean is my seat? Just rewind through some of the uh, founders advice. Transistor radios. Okay, yeah, blah blah blah. Right to what? To what? Some world harmonics there. Yes, use a meter to measure the voltage on the cable. measure it yeah I mean I I did that, that I mean I guess you're commenting on things I've already said but um anyway so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna open up studio one over here So when your man says, 
I'd like to dial four steps into my sequencer to a low C and then a high C. <laughs> but which C's? Because uh, currently this bottom C here, which is essentially giving me naught volts out of the thingy, I thought. I thought I measured that, yeah. That over there is giving me C sharp 2 and a bit. Oh no, it's a bit variable. So is that okay at the bottom or should it be lower than that? So I'm just going to go through this breadboard and attempt to stop things from touching each other to make sure that we've got the cleanest possible signal. Let's keep going for there. And I touch everything and everything has a bit of a cow about it. But, you know, it does sound fairly sawtoothy. These really long patch wires are not helping, obviously. I could literally cut them a whole load of them down. Okay. So this is currently, as I say, C sharp two. So let's see if I can go down with my special wangy thing that I've now lost. Where's the wangy thing? God. I need my trimmer, my trimmer bender. This thing here, very, very useful for trying to move that bloody nut. Very nearly C2. If I go up, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. That should be. Making that thing no difference at all.
Now I confess that um, <laughs> tuning a lost phase is one of the hardest buggery things I've I've done so far in building modules. It's it's hard and difficult and um, frustrating. It takes time, and I'm not set up for it. You know, I don't have an oscilloscope, a, tuner, a suitable tuner for this. Um, again, it's kind of some of that assumed stuff you're supposed to have when building these things, which, which no one seems to mention until you're right in the middle of it. I mean, having a keyboard that kicks out CV. If this is your first module, building this, the hope to build your first little bit of Euro rack, why would you have a sequencer that can kick out control voltage? Why would you have a keyboard that can do so? You know, these are the struggles. So you need a sequencer with CV output. You need a tuner. Things you will need need to be written at the beginning of this uh, manual. And my other question is that I don't have a 4K resistor. And that's supposed to be doing the thing that does the divide down 25. So I'm using a 14K resistor, which is not doing the same thing. So my range is not going to be as great, I don't think. And so maybe that's messing me up. So this 4K resistor. Does it mess up with the tuning? Now that happens, I do have a bunch of resistors for my wonderful project. Uh, so with my no computers Cosmo format, I've got a whole load of components in for that, which I've not yet got stuck into. Our 4K is very good. Got lots of 47s, 4.7s. Or Meg Seven, three K Nine. I mean, that's pretty close. So, geez. Okay. I don't care what it sounds like, mate. This is just on my iPhone. I'm not here to try to impress people. <clears throat> I'm literally trying to work this out. So where is this all? What am I going to do? What am I going to assume? And what happened to that 14k resistor? Maybe I'm talking nonsense and I'm past all of that. Where was that? Where was that bit? Right, let me check back to me thing here. Yeah, no, I don't even need that. That's not a factor. That's not a factor. Pop that out. That's not what's going on because that was before, when, just when we were trying it out. That's not part of the circuit. So that doesn't matter. Cool. Okay.
There's the whole breadboard experience is pretty tricky. Just really feel lower than that. Okay, that was a positive change. Let's have a look and see what that is. All right, that's an F sharp. That's a B1. Okay, that's C2, near as damn it. That's a little bit sharp. I'm unable to get in between those two things. So that's naught volts, then I want to go up to five volts. So that's naught, one, two, three, four, five, which is a little bit high, and that says A8. So it needs to come down, but I've already spun this down an awful lot, I thought. And it doesn't seem to be going down once I'm up this high, spinning that thing again. So maybe I need to bring this. Let's C2 again. I want to go up to C7. That's G8. All right, let's just keep working it. It's almost as if there's a point at which it will no longer come down, no matter how many times I turn it. It ain't doing nothing. Let's come down a little too. Should be C 
66. Do that to fix it up. It's not going down any further than that. as far down as it's going to go. Let's bring it, let's bring this all the way up to the top. Okay, that's as far as it goes that way. Bring it down as low as it can go. Look at that, that's C4. Five, six, seven. Let's try and get C4 to C7. I don't know, is it arbitrary? Who cares? That should be C7. So that's F sharp 6. But that's going the wrong way again! <laughs> it's so I can't make it go any higher. I've already reached the end of that. Oh, hardly. I can bring it down. Trial and flipping error, I'll say. Right, stick this somewhere in the middle then. One, two, three, four, five turns. G3. Okay, let's C4. Let's try C4 to C6. A sharp. So it needs to go higher. Oh, just kill me. And go, that's C6. too high now. <laughs> Again, it's got to go higher. I've got nowhere to go. Got nowhere to go. Oh, right. Oh, flip. Well, I mean, I've got what I've got here, haven't I? Um, and, you know. <laughs> so, I don't think worrying about whether the breadboard is functional or not is not necessarily going to help me. Just at the minute. Um, so, I mean, maybe, maybe I've got resistors wrong. Maybe it's not a 1K pot, although it seems to do what he says, 10 turns, more or less.
I mean, maybe the pot is wrong. Are there different pots? I guess what I should do at this point is just go through my components to make sure they are what I think they're supposed to be. So this. Okay, so maybe this is the problem. Uh, this, this sort of harks back to the difficulty I had because there's no bomb. There's nothing to tell you what the components are, to confirm what the components are. So when it just says, uh, take a pot, you take a pot. You know, which pot? It doesn't say which pot, just says take a pot. Now at some point it mentioned 100k, I think, but I've got no bit of materials to tell me what these pots are supposed to be. Now, rummaging around in the bag, I've just pulled this out. Now, this is the only one, only pot that's actually labelled, and it's a B100K. So maybe this is the one that I'm supposed to be using all this time. And maybe this is going to give me a very different result. Let's try it. So this goes... Because the problem with not having a, a bomb is that I don't know if I'm wrong. <laughs> I need to know more than anything. Okay, let's drag all those in there. Well, it doesn't make, sound like it made a whole lot of difference, to be fair. That's C4, which should be my C0. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness me. Okay, try an alternative method. Oh, rats. Still the same, it's not really going apart.
Well, that's not far off. Right. Okay, so tuning as it always is, is difficult. But I understand the concept of trying to dial that in. Know, what's coming up now? <laughs> trying to dial that in using a trimmer and a tuning knob. I, I've got that. I understand that. I've, I've done that before. What I couldn't quite work out was, you know, we're not seeing this really across the octaves that they're saying it should be. It seems far too high. Um, I'm going to go back up to the potentiometer and see if I can So I used the first time I used a port. It's changing the frequency. So it just talks about using a potentiometer. Simply set up a 100k potentiometer as shown on the breadboard. So I now do have a 100k one, to my knowledge, and then it says B100k on it. That's got to be a, something. So let me get back down to here. That's what we're using. Let me break test. Resistors. This should be a thirty three K. of the worst crocodiles in the world. 33k. Okay. This is on that third leg. Oh, maybe that's not even been on the leg, has it? Have been doing that right? That needs to go into there. That's the problem. 
and they leave that appropriate. Maybe. Don't really know. Do. Now's a D3, which isn't too bad. Can't go any lower though. And that's the top. So maybe the range isn't that far off. Just kind of expect it to go a bit lower. Point five. Oh, that killed it. Why did that kill it in particular? Oh, there we go. One point five K. Oh, that sounds better. doesn't go as hard. Maybe I'm trying to do, maybe in my head is thinking more like eight octaves when five is plenty and you know. But anyway, these are correct, so I'm going to go with it. I do have it kind of in tune. Yeah, it's gone really high again. <laughs> was down lower than that, so that's frustrating.
glory. If I not bolt on the CVM, the pot is only doing an offset, yeah. Negative on the CV will take it lower, no, I suppose. But my CV source, which is the key step 37, goes from 0 volts up to something or other. <coughs> it doesn't go below 0 volts. Anyway, so uh, if I if I take it as red that the tuning kind of sort of almost worked. <laughs> Because I know the theory. So once you get it accepted for being tuned, yeah, it should be able to play signals as many signals. Yes. But before we move on to the next part, wave shaping, one final step we have to take to minimize the temperature dependence. Unfortunately, the theory behind the step is somewhat complicated. Oh, really? Involves the infamous Ebers mole equation. Have to do some research on your own if you want to understand it. I don't really care. But the basic gist is in order to really get rid of temperature dependence resistance after our external CV input needs to be tied to an ambient temperature as well. More specifically, it agrees with a rising temperature. Sure. To achieve this, we use a opponent called an NTC thermistor, 10K variant, to be precise. It stands for a negative temperature coefficient, meaning the warmer these get, the lower the resistance. Yes. All we have to do is integrate them into the multi-input voltage divider. Since the effect is only really nice in extreme situations, we can skip this for our breadboard experimentation. Okay, fair enough. FM input, <laughs> fine tuning knob. Okay. Up until now, we've only had what we call a coarse tuning potential resistor, where a small term results a big change. Yeah. Most videos offer a fine tuning knob. Good reason, much more precise adjustment. Got it. Let's look to understand how it works. Let's look at the coarse tuning pot we already have. All that we're doing here is picking a voltage and then dividing that voltage down by a factor of around 50. That factor is determined by the value of the resistances in the multi input voltage divider, resulting in an offset voltage ranging from 130 to 20. So a full turn of the pots spans 150 volts, which is now has a huge range for easy wires. Our goal with the fine tuning pot is to cover a much smaller range. So a slight turn of the knob only results in a small change. Okay. To achieve this, we'll have to find a way to specifically divide an additional input voltage down by a much larger factor than 50. Sounds complicated. It actually is. Then it actually is. Instead of a 100k resistor, we'll use, we'll use after the coarse tuning pot, we can simply use a 1 meg one, leaving us with a divide down factor of 500. Okay. Using offset voltage added to the one coming from a coarse tuning pot, pot would give us a range of minus 10 volts to 0 volts, which would give us a decent sensitivity, decently sensitive fine tuning knob. Adding a 10k thermistor like before, we should be good. Before we leave the CV input section, let's talk about one final addition, the FM input, so for frequency modulation. It's just another CV input used to modulate the oscillator's pitch using another oscillator. 
create some harsh sounding strange sounds. Getting plenty of those already. And it might come in handy if we're able to change the intensity of that. We simply add a one meg potentiometer in series with our standard 100k resistor and 10k thermistor combination. Now, because both add ons are refinements of features we already have, and since our breadboard is already quite crowded, so we'll skip setting them up as well. So those are things we're going to put on the PCB itself. Shaping. Yeah, let's do that then. So right now our oscillator can only produce one form of waveform, the sort of, well that's perfectly nice, <laughs> we might want some variety, and the easiest to shape it into a pulse wave. The way we'll do this is by setting up an op-amp, what's known as a comparative configuration. You have a signal, you have a threshold. <gasps> So it's an op-amp feedback. We send our signal to the non-inverting input, while we're setting the comparator's, while setting the comparator's threshold by applying a voltage to the inverting input. So what does the comparator do? The comparator compares a signal to a given threshold threshold voltage. The signal is above the threshold, the comparator's output will swing to the positive. Below, it will swing to the negative. Okay. So whenever the sawtooth is above the threshold, it goes high. Whenever it doesn't, it goes low, giving us this square wave pulse, which is pretty cool. And we can change the pulse width by lowering the sawtooth waveform. Very cool. Oof. Well, we need to make our sure our threshold stays within a specific range. Well, if we use your oscilloscope, <laughs> take a look at the signal our sawtooth core is putting out, you'll notice that it's not very loud. It's swinging just between. Yeah, no, I've noticed that because it won't drive my tuner. <laughs> and if our sawtooth is that tiny, then the area within which we're able to cross the threshold is also really small. As soon as that threshold is above uh, or below, 1.5, the grounds output will simply stay low or high, giving the oscillation. Yes. So we need to make sure our threshold stays within the exact window. The easiest way to do this is by using a plain voltage divider after our potentiometer. 100k, 14k combination scales it down. Okay.
So for way of shaping, we're going to need a scope. Okay, so the last thing we do is invert an amplifier. Okay. Up until then, it's suggesting it might be very loud. Okay. What it's not saying is which potentiometer to use. So for the wave shaping, we can simply do it with another potentiometer set up as variable voltage divider. So it doesn't say which pot to use. I mean, I've already swapped out for this one. So I have these other pots. No name pots. Let me see if the number on the bottom means anything. So P104. We want four type. Okay, not to okay, something says. Yeah, it was right then. This one. It's only four. Only five. Five apparently one meg. E two five four. So it does matter there. So let's move that to there. Carry on with this one. So I don't need this in here at the minute. So 
So let's put it in 14K. How big is that? Another 100K. So fourteen K looks like it going from pin six on the off amps. Tiny space here. Same line, second one. One out. Okay. okay crazy pot. Across here, and then across to the bottom. This then somehow fits. One last bit on its last leg. Let me go to its first leg, middle leg. Oh, jeez. So this line. Okay, what my one? Right. It says it's super loud, so don't try to listen. Now I don't have a list I can easily put it into. Or do I? Well, what kind of I do? Oh, sod it. Uh, uh, people are talking about the audio clicking. I mean, I'm just using the, the microphone on the iPhone. 
uh, and I'm restreaming through restream, it may be that it's um, it ain't doing it very well. I do not know that the bit rate's perhaps not enough. Uh, I don't know. Just connected over Wi-Fi. I don't know what I can do about that. I'm sorry if the if it's clicking. Uh, but rustic, yeah. Don't be discouraged. Um, building kits is not difficult at all. Uh, trying to understand it is very difficult. It's very different. So don't worry. Uh, and I'm learning now how to do this. I'm, I don't know how to do it. Sorry about the audio. Okay, testing, testing, one, two. Okay, testing, testing, one, two. Yeah, that's not very good, is it? Okay, testing, testing, one, two. Yeah, that's not very good, is it? Thanks, Techno Bear. Okay, well, what, what I'll do, I did this before. Thanks, Techno Bear. Okay, well, what, what I'll do, I did this before. I'm just going to turn off the Facebook streams, see whether that makes any difference. I'm just going to turn off the Facebook streams, see whether that makes any difference. Um, in this case, I probably need to talk now that I've turned them off. Okay, it's just going around in circles. What I'm going to do is uh, I'll end the stream and I'll start it again and um, see if that's sorted anything out. So bear with me a minute and I'll be back. It's just going around in circles. What I'm going to do is uh, I'll end the stream and I'll start it again.